NCRP Productions presents The Alien RPG by Modifius Games, Episode 1. Hello everybody and welcome. Uh, we are playing Alien the role-playing game today. My name is David, I'm going to be your Game Master and we're going to go around the table and introduce our crew of the USCSS Montero. Hello, my name is Aaron, and today I'm going to be playing Leah Davis. I'm the pilot of this here ship. I'm a little reckless, and I have a bit of a drug problem, but not to worry. It'll be just fine. Get us there safe and sound. Hey, my name is David. I'm playing Wilson, the company agent. And uh, my main thing is safety and uh, absence of liability. We have to absolutely, positively make sure there's no liability issues on the ship. And we're going to get through this as cleanly as possible because I want a promotion. Ugh. These are very expensive toys. I can't authorize that use. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Barry. I'm going to be running Lyron Cam. So Cam grew up, grew up alone. Oh. Parents were selling power loaders on other ships, so I've been pretty much taking care of myself the whole time. In fact, when, we, when I look at things around the ship, pretty much the ship crew is my family. Kind of sad. <laughs> Cue violins. <laughs> so I'm Jill, and I am playing uh, Vanessa Miller, who is the officer and captain of the Montero, and she is trying to save up enough money to lease the Montero from the company. So in other words, you run this bitch. I do run this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, mm. awesome. Um, so... I, I mean, I have to sign off on certain things, but... This is my ship. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be a bumpy yeah, ride. You always got to have one of those company guys around thinking they're going to sit in the backseat calling the shots. <laughs> it's like a uh, music executive. Exactly. <laughs> Sitting over the, the album. It's, a, it's, the, it's the record label guy yeah. who's there, you know, during, uh, you know, um, production and, uh, you know, pre-production, you know, and even tracking. We're like, well, you know, maybe you should play it like this. I think that'll be, uh, we'll have a better And you need backup singers. My niece needs a job. Like, it's yeah. perfect. It's, yeah. it's like simpatico. It's uh, <laughs> serendipitous. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like when the doors went on the yeah. ESL show. Right. So right. instead of saying we couldn't get any higher, say, baby, we couldn't do much better. Stay on target. <laughs> it's not happening. So anyway, uh, back to Alien. So the rigors of space, right? They are many and all very uh, gruesome and lead to death in one way or another. This cold, silent. Well, that uh, sounds promising. You know, yeah, dark death. Right? But you guys are a group of space truckers, for lack of a better term. You are hauling a uh, load of canisters. These canisters contain within them a highly volatile gas uh, called tritium. And uh, that gas over time decays into and becomes something called helium-3, which is used as a power source on many, many colonies. You guys are hauling 200,000 tons of this tritium gas, some of it as uh, already aged into the helium-3 gas, but it's still a very volatile load, and you're uh, hauling 70 of these containers in your car internal cargo bay. So, uh, yes, it's very volatile. Each one of these containers is in size of about a track half of a tractor trailer, of what we would, you know, in, in the 21st century. Each of the century. 70 is that big? Each of the 70 is that big. So it completely fills the cargo bay of the Montero. Uh, Montero is a two-deck ship um, and has a 10-meter hard retractable umbilical shaft that can be used to connect to other airlocks and other ships for boarding. And it's got cryo tubes for up to five crew, which is the crew of the Montero. You guys have uh, been in cryo sleep for several months now after you've left the uh, planet of uh, Anchor Point, which is a common hub uh, that uh, a lot of uh, freighter um, crews like yourselves will stop at to pick up loads and carry out to the outer rim uh, systems. Um, and you are en route to a place called Sutter's World, and it has been several months, I'd say, in, that you've been in cryosleep. As you guys are in your cryotubes, you get that, you know, kind of, you know, when you, you know when someone walks into your room and you're just you're really sleeping well, and somebody turns on the light, oh, right? And it's, and it's coming through your, your, your eyelids, you're like, so you immediately start to frown, like, mm. You get that, and that sluggish, like as your mind starts to, you know, the neurons in your brain start to fire a little bit, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm in space, man. Right? Ah, shit. And <laughs> you wake up to the lights flickering and things coming on, and you're in your cryotube. You eventually 
the cryo tube opens up and you guys are all waking up and you as your wits kind of come back to you you realize that oh yeah we're on our way to Sutter's world oh we got to get up and get ready to you know to drop off our load we got and get a job paid, to do right? yeah so uh, your heads are, are, are cloudy uh, you know some of you may be experiencing a little bit of uh, disorientation which is quite common with cryo sleep longer stints of cryo sleep you can actually uh, experience uh, uh, some slight amnesia and things like that but past a small headache something like that and a little uh, you know maybe a little nausea for a moment you guys are are all under the effects of being dehydrated because you've been in cryo sleep which is a common side effect it's one of the first things you're going to want to do when you guys wake up you're going to be very thirsty your mouths are going to be dry as you look to your left and right you see the other members of the crew in their cryo tubes uh, giving equally similar frowns and things of like, no, I don't want to get up anymore, right? As you guys were in various states of, of, of sleep. You'll also notice that the, uh, I'm sorry, what's what's our company man's name? Wilson. You'll notice that Wilson's cryo tube, the top of the tube isn't quite opening up far enough for him to actually get all the way out. So he's <laughs> kind of like, he's fighting with it and he's struggling with it while all the other tubes are kind of completely opened up as you kind of look over to the commotion. He's like, obviously he's not very well um, um, experienced with this type of thing. Uh, as a company man, he spends a lot of time on world as opposed to off world. So you find that a little bit amusing as you guys open your eyes. And, you know, and, and this is normal wake up. There's no klaxons going off, proximity alert. Uh, we've been right. hit or anything like that. We're just waking up. We're fairly certain we're scheduled to wake up now. That's yeah. what we're going to think coming You're assuming, out. yeah. You're not waking right. up and there. you don't hear any alarms going off. You don't hear, um, you know, you know, 30 seconds to uh, detonation or anything like that, or nothing, we're you know, imminent impact. A couple days out? Uh, yeah, so you would assume that you're probably, you're you're probably 24 to 48 hours away from your destination. That gives you enough time to uh, rehydrate, get something to eat, get reaffiliated with the ship, uh, do a full diagnostic on any of the ship's systems to make sure everything's working okay, and get prepared to deliver uh, the cargo. Oh, fuck. So that's where we begin. We okay. are in our cryo tubes, and you're watching our company man, uh, yeah, you have to remind me your names, Wilson, kick and kind of push on this thing. He doesn't appear to be in his efforts being very successful, so you start <laughs> to feel like, well, somebody shut this guy up. Let me go help him lift the canopy. Knock off the pounding! Uh, Pardon, excuse me, uh, why don't you find folks open this uh, I'll cashier? get up and open the tube for him. It's like speaking to the side. Hey, you, over here. <laughs> the, the company uh, thanks you. Obviously, this is your first time. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta have one stint out here to get a promotion. Now, as a company man, you know, you've gone through simulation lots of times, right? But you've never had this no. issue. This is, your, this is your first run of actual real cryo sleep, so well, you feel quite like a bad one. Yeah. So, Cam's got no concerns. He just stands up, goes right over to the water. Mm -hmm. I mean, slowly, of course. Mm -hmm. Pours himself a glass, starts drinking. Okay. So, a few moments later, as you guys are kind of, you know, kicking your feet out of the out of the cryo tubes and, you know, and... and you know, start thinking about you know heading towards you know the, the storage bays where your clothes are being stored and your suits are stored you know mother the uh, onboard computer system says welcome captain wilson no nope. <laughs> isn't it wilson is no. Wilson? No, no miller no. she's miller, miller captain miller sorry <laughs> like uh, yeah, the computer saying <laughs> captain wilson miller captain miller i like that computer yeah i wish we had like everyone's name in front of like the little name tags right mm -hmm. captain miller yeah good morning captain miller hello mother so you know you've got a you've got an active computer system on board the Montero that basically pilots the ship, sets off alerts and things like that, and manages everything, including your cryo tubes while you guys are in cryo sleep, and uh, you're now being greeted. Right? A status report on the ship, please. All systems functional. How was your sleep? Fine, thank you. You'll you'll be happy to know that uh, your provisions are being prepared in the mess hall. Fucking A, about time. Oh, I'm starving. Oh my god. Do I have a PDA or Where's something? Where's that, like that bottle? Like near my tube, or I have to go back to the uh, where gear is. Uh, so, what, if, for your personal equipment, do you have a, what do you have? Well, I, it still only says key card, but I assume I have a PDA that lists like, you know, regulations and. Nope, you know them by heart, right? Your company man, the okay. only gear that you have, wake up in your cryo tubes, you're in your underwear and a t shirt. Yep. Yep, yep. that's it. Everything else. Where's my locker? I have yep, business to attend to. Yep, you got a locker in the storage mm -hmm. facility, uh, which you can go to and um, you know um, and get your gear. So all the gear that you guys have, uh, the ship has a list of gear, and then what you have on your care sheets is what you have. 
Uh, as far as company thing. policies and things like that, you know what they are, so you represent the company, so you've been through a rigorous amount of, of uh, you know, training, mm -hmm. and uh, you're able to cite company regulation, you know, Off at a bit. snap of the fingers. Um, Paragraphs three, paragraph, uh, chapter five, whatever. Mm -hmm. Section, yeah. <laughs> yeah, subsection D. Yeah. And if you, you know, there have been moments where, you know, members, you know, of the crew might have been like, yeah, I don't think so, um, you know, and that would be a role, you know, like manipulation mm -hmm. role. Like, oh no, I know what I'm talking about, right? So as far as compliance goes, right? But you haven't run into any problems. And based on Mother's report, there's no, you know that Mother would report any abnormalities or um, anything that would have been of importance along the trip. That's good. So, but you can always go back and re-look at the, at the, the log, yeah. um, ship's log, and, and see, you know, if there was, you know, if you guys had to um, make any course corrections or anything like that. So I'm going to uh, hydrate and get dressed. Okay. And then I'm going to tell everyone, um, if you want to go to the mess hall and eat, go right ahead. I'm going to head to the bridge and take a look at the ship's logs, and then I'll be joining you. Captain Miller, hear you. 10-4, good buddy, but I have some business to attend to first. I need to go to my locker and just get a little pick-me-up, if you know what I mean. Davis, looking good. Thank you. You as well. You as well. Yep. How'd you sleep? Uh... Any good dreams? I don't know. I, I don't know if I've dreamt much. Something's in there. It'll shake loose. Usually, I dreamt of this usually food. beautiful green skin lady, and she was giving me a hell of a ride. It was magnificent. I was kind of pissed to wake up, actually. But, you know, it's okay. We got a job to do. Let's, let's no, get no, no, to no, it. No, 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 wait, wait. Come back. Go back to the green lady. Let's have a description. Man, she had these bajungas, like you won't believe, bouncy mm -hmm. as hell, and she was just riding me for all she was worth. Mm. Scissors. Anyway. The way to go. <laughs> And I'm gonna, I'm gonna pour, I'm gonna pour you a glass of water, hand it to you. Thank you, thank you. And she's going to pop open her pill bottle, and she's going to just put it up to her lips and and take one or two and and swish it down. <laughs> or however many come out. <laughs> however many come out. Uh, she's running a little low, and she seems a bit unhappy about that. All right, guys. Well, it is good to see you too. Let's get to work. I'm going to uh, shake my head at her. Her, uh, <laughs> boom thing, then go with the captain up to the bridge. Every paycheck, a banquet. Every paycheck, a I just want to make sure everything looks good. <laughs> we're covered. Mr. Wilson, you're uh, not needed on the bridge at this time. Why don't you go get something to eat? Ooh, oh, burn, I, buddy boy! I feel it's my obligation to uh, make sure that everything's running smoothly. Uh, well, you know, Mother already gave us the okay that everything was running smoothly. I'm just going to be reviewing logs, so you might as well go get something to eat. I'm going to really give hand signals to, to Davis, like, I'm heading yeah, to the You're to definitely the hungry, and you're very, very, uh, you feel very dehydrated, so you're definitely thirsty. The idea of going to the mess hall to get something to eat is, is definitely appealing. You know that this is common, right? You, you know that in your, in your past of working with company men, especially ones that don't have a long history of space travel, that they feel, because of the amount of time they spend in front of books, that they have this authority on ships, but really, they know very little about them and how why how why they work. So but you always you're always in that mode of like, yeah, yeah, you, you feel like the broken record is you know the company man's like, oh, I think I better go to the bridge and mention you're like, no, that's my job. <laughs> Not only is he a newbie, but he's a huge pain in the ass. I want to get him out of my That's hair. what I was thinking. It's None of us like you. the second lieutenant just come in out of the cabinet. None of us <laughs> like you. Yep. So I'm gonna grab my work pants, throw them over my shoulder. All right. Underwear on, head to the head to food. Okay, so you guys, you guys are all in the mess hall. Unless somebody wants to do something, are you going to head to the bridge, Captain? Yes. All right, Captain's heading to the bridge. Everyone else is going to the mess hall. Yeah, yeah I'm all in suit. I'm staying in my chair. undies, and I'm I'm just undies and tank top. Yeah, right. undies oh, and tank top. Oh, okay, so you guys sit around the table there, and you know you, you start getting you know there's there's you know dehydrated uh, you know food stores that you hydrate you know uh, with with onboard uh, water and consumables this headache i need to find the dehydrated water pills right yep yep and you start yeah you start hydrating and things like that uh, so here's a Gatorade so what <laughs> electrolytes it's what plants crave yep <laughs> so um so so while we're sitting around the the mess hall table let's let's go around the table and talk about you know each if you've got like a personal relation with with somebody or you've got a buddy maybe a little bit of a just a little bit more as another crumb of your backstory maybe about your character or what you see your character being as might be displayed on your character sheet or who your you know uh, uh you know who your buddies are or maybe if you talk about somebody that you don't like you know you're like you know what i've been out here in space for the last i don't know 23 cycles and you know i don't know i mean while you know while well, a company man, you know, uh, you know, uh, what's your last name? Wilson. 
Wilson, uh, you know, seems to be, you know, somebody upstairs thinks he's the best man for the job. I, I just don't know why they keep sending us awesome. these guys. So are we right. talking? Are we talking? Around the table, or are we talking to the audience for the podcast? You're sitting, around the, you're sitting around the table, and now we're just kind of, as a soliloquy, kind of talking to the audience and our listeners about <laughs> to give us a better understanding of, of who who's we sitting are. around the table. Exactly, who's okay. sitting around the table. All right, well, Leah, or Leah Davis goes by Davis. She is friends with Miller. She, I trust you. You're my captain. You've never led us astray. So I'll follow you, what you tell me most of the time, unless it's super boring. And then I might need to just mix things up a little bit. Do you do you perceive yourself being that adventurous type that maybe at times has a problem with the authority that, that Captain Miller? I mean, she's my buddy, to you, or you and so much I trust her completely. I I think I pretty much trust her completely, but I know that she doesn't want to do the crazy things I want to do. But so maybe I kind of try to talk her into it a little bit sometimes. I, I'm the little devil on her shoulder. Are you more like you know uh, better to ask for forgiveness than permission? Yes, definitely, okay. definitely. Okay. But we're buddies, you know. She'll forgive me. She'll be fine. Now, you know, in piloting the ship, and especially with the, uh, the the touchy cargo that you're carrying, you know, flying the ship, flying the ship, flying the sheep. Um, <laughs> she, any, no. you know, <laughs> sudden evasive maneuvers and things like that. You do everything that you can to keep the cargo stable, right? And part of that stability is not having to bounce around. So, uh, I probably don't give a whole lot of information to the group as we're talking because I'm all about the company. I, mm -hmm. I'm a great guy. I don't know why people have a problem with me because I like I grew up in I was the head of my team for my debate team in, in law school and you know the life of the party but for some reason people on a ship just don't like me very much. It's not that kind of party. <laughs> and so yeah you were taught you were taught uh, in your training that you know you know when you get out in the field quite common for Members, you know, uh, you know, roughnecks and, and people like that that are out in the field don't understand the, uh, the structure, mm -hmm. structured ways of corporate living. Um, that you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna encounter that, and to, you've, you've got a, um, an arsenal of techniques that you can put into practice that help you through those tough situations. I also think the the captain, uh, you know, I, I hear from what you know everything that everyone's told me. Captains often think that the ship is theirs. And they, they tend to go a little bit loose on the rules because it's theirs, but they don't remember it's actually the company's ship. It's It belongs to someone else, and you're just taking care of it. You don't own that plane. The taxpayers do. <laughs> okay, gotcha. All right. All right, Maverick. So for Cam, he normally rides with another roughneck. It's the first trip I've taken in a while with without that other person, without Rye. So... This is the group. This yeah. is who I work with. They pretty much follow orders, do what needs to be done. It's a job. I'm, I'm working for my life after. Figure, you know, the things that I didn't have as a kid, I'm going to have now. You know, the wife, the bouncing babies, all of that. Just just got to get some money put away. Okay. Okay. All right. So as you guys are kind of sharing the information. Did you want Captain Miller to yep, speak to Yep, we're going to get Captain okay. Miller in a moment. Right? So Captain Miller's up on the bridge, right? Um, okay. So what are, are you specifically looking for anything up on the bridge? Everything's the... So the bridge has uh, your your observation window panels have a shield that comes down. They're in the down position, so you can't see through them. You can easily uh, you know put in your access key. Once you do, it gives you full availability of everything on board the ship, so that you can go in, use your codes to basically perform any function that you need. You can raise the you can raise the blast blast shield for a better term, but you can raise the panels on the windows and stuff like to see you know kind of what, okay. you know, where are we right? Yeah, I'll put in my code and I'll raise the. Okay. The shields um, on the windows. From from what you can tell, right? So Sutter's Sutter's world Sutter's world is a a tri-star planet. So uh, it actually receives radiation from three different stars at, at any given point during the day. So as you you know your first perception as you look out the you know the front of you know, out of the bridge into the deep space because you do see the three stars in the distance, right? You've been out here before. You've made this run plenty of times. You feel confident that you're where you're supposed to be. Okay. So I'm just going to sit here and go through the logs, make sure we didn't have to do any course corrections or anything okay. unusual happen or anything like that. All right. So as, as you're looking through the log, everything looks great. Uh, you know, at one point the ship did veer a little bit off course to divert. It looked like there was probably like a, a minor meteor shower or something like that, that that a mother probably thought, you know, easier just to go around it. We don't have to break wide. And then quickly got back onto its plotted course. Other than that, uneventful trip up till now and as you're looking through the logs mother comes along and says proximity alert imminent impact to ship 20 seconds 
Do I hear this right. too? Is that ship wide or is that no, just on the bridge? bridge right? Okay. Okay. Mother knows where you're at at all times, right? And, and mother makes the distinction on whether she's going to tell you or she's going to make a ship wide alert, right? So she lets you know. So as you start looking at the sensors, you see that there is an object floating that is going to come into contact. It's going to basically intercept with you in the ship. So I'm going to slow us down a little bit so we don't crash into it. Over the calm, I'm going to say, Davis, get up here. Oh, okay. 10-4, good buddy. So I'm coming on up. Going on, she can't handle anything, can she? So first, you guys hear that over the calm. Davis, get up here. Um, you sense a little bit of urgency in the captain's voice, which is a little alarming to you because typically you guys would be chilling out for a while, eating, catching up, um, you know, and eventually the captain would come down and start busting your butts about, come on, well, let's go, let's get moving, ladies. Right, so... If it's, that, if it's that much, I'll scrape the last of the powdered eggs into my mouth and I'll pull on my pants and head that direction okay, too. Right. I'm going to be um, like running and putting on my pants at the same time and okay. maybe like base plant a couple times and okay. then keep going. All right. Well, first thing I want you to do, Jill, is go ahead and, the captain, uh, go ahead and give me a piloting roll. So you're, oh, going to attempt, you're going to attempt to veer the ship off of its current trajectory so that it doesn't come into contact with this object that's floating. As, and as you look out, the front, you don't see anything, but uh, but you know, and you know inherently that you know you would make a sensors test to determine what is it, you know how fast is it traveling. Mother's told you basically done that for you and said, hey, 20 seconds to impact. You don't know if it's a missile, another ship, you know, it could be anything, a piece of debris, you know, who knows what. Okay. All right. So. So you're gonna make a piloting roll. So you're gonna roll. Your, if you look at your character, something at least. Here's sheet. You're gonna roll your piloting. So everything's what's your piloting? I have a piloting of two. So you're roll two. If you turn it over, you'll see that the piloting skill is next to one of the attributes. Okay. It's next agility. to your uh, agility. So you're also going to roll three more dice. So you're rolling a total of five, and you're looking for one six, which it had the little little cross on cross it. Crosshair on it. Yep. All right. So you've got two hits. Ooh, okay. Right? So you only need one hit for a success on any skill test. Anytime you get more than one, you can do what's called a stunt if you want to. You can... And you'll see that there's a list of stunts under each skill, and you've got those choices for each additional hit that you get. You can do one or more of those. Do you bear don't, roll. You don't have to do a stunt do bear if you roll. don't want to, but you can. And Stop at this on point, time. you just have to let me know That's if you want to perform any of the stunts. Run, run right, up to the bridge. The, the two of us are like, stopping on a dime. You gotta be kidding me. She's gonna do a barrel roll now. <laughs> She's got like one, one pilot array with like her foot, you know, and the other one's like, yeah, I got this. <laughs> This is about the size of a you see it there on the destroyer. Pilot. See the stunts right there? Oh, yeah. Okay. 130 meters? There's a, that's more of a frigate. So I think that I will uh, gain one uh, plus one modification to a later skill roll. To a future roll? Okay, cool. Because All right. we are carrying some volatile right, okay. cargo and I really don't want to I'm show assuming, off. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming that the shift that you want to make with a ship is to also keep the cargo as stable yes. as possible. Right? Yes. Even though they're strapped down, any you know big adjust, sudden adjustments could shake the ship, uh, shake the cargo around a little bit. All right. So before we move on, Matt, tell us about your character. Uh, my character's name is Lucas. Uh, he is a scientist, and uh, basically he's he's quite a, kind of quiet, but um, he. Anybody who like looks up his records or anything will find out that he's like quite he has excelled in quite a few areas. Yeah, that's a good, good summation of it. Perfect. So uh, above and beyond that, right? You come to instead of waking up in a cryo tube, you wake up into the deep freeze of the darkness of space. Right? You are floating in space. As you open your eyes and your systems come online, you see there is a ship fairly close proximity that you are drifting towards and that you are pretty certain you are going to come into contact with okay so the ship has all kinds of like maybe it could be like handholds and different things when people go out and do spacewalks and do maintenance outside the ship for you to try and grab onto are you going to try and, and as you try and adjust mentally like hey you know what am i gonna what's my best handhold or try and grab onto something if i want to grab onto the ship the ship starts to take starts to starts to juke itself a little bit and it looks like the ship's trying to adjust itself to where it's not going to come into contact with you like it's trying to dodge you basically are you going to try and compensate so that you still come into contact with the ship or are you going to let it pass you by so i'm going to look at to see how much uh fuel like air supply i have left in my suit 
And then, uh... Um, you don't have a suit on. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, Shit. You are a synthetic. Well, oh, 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 yes. okay, you're fine. You are a synthetic. Like he's a space you, alien. You don't <laughs> breathe. Like, oh, no. you, you are in standard Wayland yutani, yutani work clothing, right? With proper insignia, right? You're basically like workman level one, right? And you're synthetic, and you're floating in space, and because you're synthetic, you don't need to, you don't need air, you don't need food, you don't suffer the effects of the freezing environment of space, but you went into like this hibernate where your system's kind of powered down into sleep mode, so they're only running the most nominal things to keep your systems active. But when you come into proximity of the ship, you power up and come out of that sleep mode, you realize, ship, right? Ship. So, <laughs> sorry, I didn't, ship. I didn't think I was ship. supposed to reveal well, that. Yeah. Oh, it's so, going to be obvious once, yeah, once, you know, it's going to be obvious that you're, uh, you right. know, yes. So, yeah. all right, so, um, yeah, I'm going to just, like, kind of try to fling myself to, so I can grab on to the nearest part of the no ship. No hitchhikers. Or, okay. Of the ship. So, go ahead and give me a uh, mobility roll. Yep, so you're gonna roll the, the black dice. Oh, okay. So you're gonna roll your mobility skill plus your agility, I think it is, isn't it? Okay, so. Yeah, so it's just gonna be my agility. Just agility, you don't have mobility in the ranks. Okay, so just your agility. Okay. Um, right, no so success. So you don't have any successes. So at this point, you can decide you could push the roll and try and, and which would allow you to re roll all those uh, dice that weren't successes to try and get a success. Uh, but it, but what it also does is it adds a stress die. But as a synthetic, you don't suffer stress tests. Oh, but you, what? And then, actually, as a matter of fact, you're a synthetic. You also can't push rolls. I'm sorry. So you can't oh. push rolls because you like you basically try something that doesn't work. You're like, mm. you know what I mean? Where non-synthetics, where they push rolls, like, oh, man, I know I can do this, right? And you just you focus in and try harder, right? Right. Okay. Do you so, want to do you want to describe what the stress die does now, since we've talked about it, even though he's not going to roll it? Well, 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 I think we'll cover the stress dice as we get through it, because it'll be something that you guys, you know, it'll be, I'm sure, relatively quickly, someone will be rolling a stress test. So, <laughs> gotcha. You know, the stress die just represents you trying again. Now you also have these as well, which you know you can also use. So now, I'm um, sorry, so remind me again uh, what your action was going to, what you were attempting to do. I was going to try to grab the nearest part of the ship's superstructure. Okay. So now uh, I'm just going to kind of wait till something else gets close and try to reach okay. for that. Right. So back into the bridge, you have, uh, you, you, you kind of, you kind of move the ship and now go ahead and give me a, uh, let's see, what would be the best? It would be a com tech. No, yeah, give me a com tech roll. No, no piloting roll. I'm still piloting. Oh, okay. Give me a piloting roll again. Do I have any job on this deck? You do. You are on your way. <laughs> Here you're, you're now. So now you, you, you're you're changing the, the the ship's course, but at the same time you're looking. Now you're taking a look at the sensors to see what is this that's going to run into us. The proximity alarm okay. is not going off ship wide at this time. Yeah, still the message the mother delivered to the bridge. Just the bridge. Right. So I did not get any so successes. Doesn't sound like emergency. So yes. now you can push the roll and try again, or you can use one of our famous little uh, you know group. Tokens. I think I'll use a group token. Okay, you're going to use a group token, which will allow you to re-roll. And just so our listeners know what the group tokens are, this is something that I've added to uh, our game here today, and it measures everyone's ability to work together. And so I've added one token per player, and any of the players can use these tokens at any time to either, instead of pushing a test, re-roll their failures, or reduce their stress level by one. So we've now used one. There are five more tokens left. So four, I got four two successes. Left. So you got two successes on this one. So you pick up on the sensors that there is a there is somebody outside that is coming into contact with the ship. Bull. Not something, but somebody. All right. Okay. When we get onto the bridge, is the proximity alarm going on yeah. on the bridge, or there's no alarm? You, you said you said that mother has spoken to the captain, right? But when there's not Davis and I get on, all right. So there's when Davis and I get on the bridge, we just see the captain running around station to station. Yeah, well, captain's like basically sitting at the at the at the at the console. You can pull up sensors there. Are there like sensors and cameras so I can actually see? Yeah. What's so as you as you look at one of the you know, as you look there? at one of the, the cameras, see what's out there. There is literally a, a person. Uh, go ahead and describe yourself. Well, I look. I have uh, dark hair. <laughs> I kind of have a. Uh, Strong nose, uh, a uh, like kind of like uh, I almost look like a famous actor, you think, or something, you know, yeah. from but back then. But yeah, I have a close cut, ha cropped hair, and like you can see, like deep kind of laugh lines and stuff okay. like that. You don't look like a typical hitchhiker. Uh, wait, wait a second, uh, Is Will, he in Willem Dafoe. 
No, he is not in a suit. Okay. So, um, and he appears to be moving. He appears to be trying to grab onto the hull of the ship. Without as a spacesuit? As you try and move by, he does not have a spacesuit on. Bare hands, right? Wearing a Wayland Utani uh, work overalls, basically. You're almost immediately going to think the only way this guy can be trying to grab hold of the ship right now is he's got to be a synthetic. Yeah. yeah. You know that. You know that if you go into space and you hold your breath, your lungs implode. You know, I mean, it's just not, you're dying within seconds. I mean, whether it's the sub zero temperatures or it's the pressure, something like that. So, the only way this thing could have survived is he's somehow he's a synth. He's wearing a Whaley, but you do notice that he's wearing a Whaley Yutani uniform. How close is he to some kind of a hatch that someone could go out and get him? <laughs> um, he is, so the, the way the, the Montero's set up, uh, Montero has the uh, the, umbil- uh, the extractable umbilical cord, you know, shaft that is towards the rear of the ship and underneath. Mm-hmm. You could extract that uh, and try, and, he's towards the front of the ship, he's just past the bridge. So, you know, consider him being like maybe at the shoulder a little bit, you know, if it was a, if it were a, were a body. Um, he's trying to grab on to something to, to stop, but you're, but at the same time he's trying to grab on, you're trying, you're veering off away from him. It's making it more difficult. Are so there lights trouble. out there that I can flash at him or something to try and direct him towards the, uh, Come on the deck to yet. Do that? I want to be on uh, the deck umbilical? now. Nude girls here. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so there are lights, you know, there are things you're not sure, you have no idea, you know, what the capabilities of the synthetic is, because whether you can you understand or comprehend, pilot. you know, if you're delivering in some type of Morse code or something. It could be malfunctioning. Um, at this point, uh, Davis is going to enter the bridge. That would right? be both of us. Both okay, fun. Davis yeah, and, I'm running right. and Sean. I'm running right, up there too. Okay, Cam. So Cam and uh, Wilson. So is Wilson, Did Wilson Davis, follow us up? I thought oh, you were yeah. eating. Oh, you ran up after us? Oh, yeah, something's going on here. I have there's to make no sure way I'd there is no way I would allow him to get in front of me going up. I'm okay. letting Davis go ahead. <laughs> You're probably much more in shape. That's right. I'm the pilot, you know? All right. All right. Come on. So you see these three come up, all right? Follow, these two followed by the company man. They come up there now. They Cap, what do we got? What's the 411? Okay, so it looks like... Now remember, okay, so you heard you heard her say to Davis, get up here. Yeah. yeah. yeah go, well, you saw Davis, that. like, running, like, tripping we over heard, her pants. Yeah, trying we heard to... the call, and then you told me from my character that... The there captain sense didn't of, sound right. You heard the sense of urgency. That's why I grabbed my pants, otherwise I wouldn't have taken them. Cool. Still be eating. <laughs> I am wearing my brown pants. Am I going out of clothes? Right. <laughs> my brown pants. Okay, so we um, we almost hit something. We have what that's looks to be That's David, you should have never gotten into the cryos. You should have been driving the whole time. I'm, Crazy autopilots. It's not my choice. It's like the comp- company regulation. But I know. How do you hit something bomb. in space? Okay, I'm kind of looking out the window. Settle down, guys. All right, all right. So it looks like it is a synthetic. I'm going to look at the screen. Um, he's wearing say what? a uh, Waylon uh, Utani work uniform and it looks like he is uh, gripping onto the side of the ship. I am looking right at Wilson. I'm looking at the screen to see what model synthetic it is. Alright, so go ahead and give me a give me a give me a piloting role. A piloting role? Yeah, so part of the piloting skill is going to be um, your ability to interact with the uh, ship's sensors and different things like that. <laughs> so I think, I've, I've, you know, you remember your simulation days. Oh, one. you got okay, one. You got one. So you, you know how to at least, you know, angle the rear view mirror where you can see what's out there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Captain, what Objects do you want me to do? Closer to <laughs> okay, so... Do you want me to do some maneuvering and swoop him up and whoa, I can whoa, whoa, are we bringing him on? We are bringing him well, on. That's what are I'm you asking. sure? That's Let what I'm asking. Let me find out model is because... You, you know that they set it up. Just... You know it's, it's him. It's his fault. So... It's... Buddy, you're sounding real paranoid right now. No, you're... no, I'm just saying. Just okay. shake off the cryo, you know, shake it off. Okay, settle down, you guys. So, we are bringing him on board. May I advise to keep him locked in the airlock until we can... Jesus, Davis, we're in the middle of the gauntlet. There isn't just going to be a guy out here. I follow what unlikely. my captain says. Think and... of it as recovering company property. We can so... just keep him in the airlock. Yeah, it's fine. until we can verify that he's not malfunctioning. So, uh... we're bringing him on board the ship. Uh, Cam, um, we may need somebody to suit up and go out there and get him. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you just run the lights down the back side of the ship and have him come to the damn cargo bay doors? Just click, okay. click, click. I can run maneuver him in. that. So, I can maneuver that. So the, the ship does have a drop ramp, 
in the back. It's how you load and unload cargo. Okay. So obviously, you have so, to seal uh, the cargo hold and oh. you know for pressurization. So now now since I've been ship. told, get ready. In I will dash you out need to go down in case you need to go out. Well, I'm get gonna just dash to... out. I'm gonna get in the suit anyway. Because there's no other way we're gonna uh, let him in without opening something. So I'm suiting up. Davis, direct him there with the lights and candy. Um, candy. Uh, this is the um, yeah, I'm going to put the butt right next to that that okay. floating synthetic. Wilson, that, as you that see in be the sensors, problem. you start looking. You see that it is a uh, it is an uh, it looks to be like an, uh, uh, one of the Bishop models. Were there any problems with the Bishop models? Uh, some of them did have some malfunctions and turned hostile on on, on certain reports. Mm. Uh, depending on what model it is, um, you well, won't know until outside of a ship. He might have got spaced. But for some reason, he's in space. Now you have heard you've heard being a company man. You've heard that. Other other companies, and, and this was something that, that you've sat in on meetings that you've talked about, whether it be a good go-to-market strategy for WY or not, uh, but you know that some companies jettisoned, uh, sent out probes, and in some cases, forms of synthetics because they didn't have to adhere to the limitations or the restrictions of space, mm -hmm. that they sent them out as basically information gatherers. Some other but companies you don't, doing Yeah, that. but you don't know if this is that case or not, or whether he was jettisoned because he was completely unruly. Does Mother have the capabilities of, like, scanning things that we're about to run into? Yes, that's what uh, Mother probably did. Uh, mm -hmm. That's, you know. Um, yeah. So there's no contaminants. There's no, like, nothing that we should know, biological matter attached to them that we should be worried about. Nothing that's being reported. All right. All right. Just so I'm going to tell you, uh, was it Miller? Miller, uh, this is a Bishop model which have been known to have some uh, malfunctions in the past. So I would be very cautious in bringing him into the ship. I didn't hear that if I'm already headed down the hallway. Yeah, yeah you've already exited the bridge. You're <laughs> heading back to storage so that you can put on one of the suits. Right. It is going to take you, you know, it takes, you know, to put on a suit without help is, is a shift. One shift, which is 10 minutes. Okay. So, all right. So you're heading down that way. Everyone else is still up on the bridge. And you guys are talking about, uh, you know, Wilson's assessment of the synthetic that is out there. Okay, that's noted. But I'm going to quote whatever the space maritime law is of helping somebody in space distress. Space versus, versus company policy. I love it. All right. And so, I'm all right. going to remind you that this is potentially company property that mm -hmm. we're recovering. So go ahead and give me a manipulation roll. And this is going to be an opposed roll against your manipulation. Okay. Is there, a, is there like a bounty on uh, bringing in recovered... Bishop models or anything like that. The, the the knowledge of these of these floating satellites, I'm Thank assuming, you. is company knowledge, meaning no one else in the ship probably knows anything about it other than Wilson, correct? I'll start that one more time. The Bishop models of these synthetics being used as information gatherers is not known. Wilson knows it because he's part of the company, correct? Sorry. Oh killing me. Sorry. One more Stay time. Stay on the target. Bar, I'm the bar Stay on here. target. <laughs> One more time. I'm so, sorry. I'm One, sorry. Right, well, Thank you. The information trying. gathering synthetics. Yes. Is that known, or is it Wilson knows it because it's a group? Wilson thing. knows it because he's a the rest of us do not know. Right. That. Yeah. Okay. You've never encountered anything like that. All right. We're like, like, ooh, a new toy. Let's make it up and make it mop Wilson, our floors. <laughs> Wilson also knows that, you know, one of many theories could be the case. You're not sure because it all depends on what his programming is. And typically, you don't walk into the center and be like, tell me about your programming, right? And they, you know, and they're like, oh, it's like this. You know that generally synthetics aren't programmed to for uh, for harm. It's actually against their programming directly to harm human life. Three laws. Yep. And that's that's known. Prime directive. Yeah. Yep. That's not corporate known. That's, that's known. known. Right. And I that's assume known. malfunctions would have been heavily uh, edited out. Yep. So but people don't everyone's heard cases where the synthetics <laughs> yeah. have gone bad, you know, and, and you know, either, you know, cause mutiny or, you know, killed people on ships. You know, there's all kinds of stories. So while there's an, an like imminent threat, a synthetic run, you know, uh, like, you know, like a Terminator or something like that, uh, you know, that, hey, you know, doesn't mean that you understand 
everything that might be behind, you know, behind the skin, what's really floating around in that, you know, in that, that milk oatmeal blood of theirs, you know? <laughs> Girls Gone Wild gets preempted so by got, Synthetics Gone Bad. <laughs> right. I got no successes. When so Synthetics Attack. Kind of I'm thinking, Slow humans, I'm thinking synthetics. if we bring this Synthetic when on synthetics board, attack. Yes. because it looks da, like da, it's da, company da, property, I might be able to leverage against the company that, hey, I'm returning something that was lost. Maybe I can get some kind of a bonus out of this, and it'll make it easier to buy my shit. That's kind of what I was asking earlier. Yeah, absolutely yeah, Very reasonable. small chance. And you also know at the end of the day, you're all, it's my ship. When I open the doors on this sucker, and when I say open the doors, the doors open. Right? So I got two successes on this. You got two. So, you know, she tries to like, you know, she tries to quote, you know, some kind of ethics code to you, and you know, rather space than space salvage code. Rather than rather than uh, you know get into it with her, you're just like, okay, <laughs> right? I just want her to be very cautious because I can see 20 million ways this can go bad, and very few that can go well. But you also, as a company man, go, wow, you know, you are intrigued by the fact that there's a, a, a free-floating synth in oh, space. Oh, we could make quite a bit of money that, out of that. That could mean some money for you, mm -hmm. right? That's right. So, You've so. heard about the program. You've just never seen the program. Like, no, I'm not even... Be, right? I, that's something in the back of my mind. It's a possibility, but it's more than likely that this was jettisoned from a ship passing through here. Yeah. Could I'm okay with that keeping it. Mathematically, in. that's... Right. Go and give me another likely. mobility row, Lucas, to see if you can grab on some other part of the ship. So you've missed the first... Yes, Lucas seeing the light. The dit, 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 so you're seeing yeah, lights. You've seen several lights flash. It's like a um, runway. You know, that's what I'm doing. That's what mm -hmm. I was trying to get him to do. Oh, yeah, that's what we you, do. you don't see like you know you don't see it through the window. You don't see the window like this guy running, putting on a suit, going, hold on, hold on, I'll be right there, hold up a sign, wait, <laughs> swim, pal. <laughs> no, he just bounced off another wall. Oh. Okay, so you're like, boom. Boom. Yeah, the last one. <laughs> see him go by. Right. When do I just get to start? To Piloting this thing. Yes, so you are now. Um, I'm ready. You are in the bridge. You sit down into one of the piloting um, consoles. You've got the, you know, all the controls in front of you. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to angle the the butt of the um of the okay. ship where it has the airlock to open. Okay. Like the the ramp, you know, and everything. Okay. And so I want to like, <laughs> I'm going to angle the ship so. So Cam can just like run out there, grab him, pull him in, and then we can shut the airlock again. Okay. So, that was the shortest so character you've ever played. <laughs> Burns up an atmo. So, okay, so go and give me a piloting roll Ooh. to basically angle the ship. And then you okay. know once you get your suit you on, like this Cam. To that. Six, so that we seven, eight. Okay. And once you get your suit on, Cam, you know that once you get down into the cargo hold, right, the cargo hold's cramped space. It's, it's it has the, the uh the the clustered, you know, status on it, which makes it really hard and limits how much you can move. So it's going to be a small window to try and get him in here, even though the ramp's big, and you don't want to risk losing any of the cargo. Right, right. Of course not. Okay. So. But I'm ten minutes putting my suit on, so right, I got to so wait. Ten minutes put your suit on. So at this point, you're trying to like basically match the rate yeah. of travel. Yeah. Right? I, I kind of want to like lead him a bit, so I know because I know it takes him a while to take put on the suit. So I'm yeah. going to lead it a little bit, so there's like a little bit of drift. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. That's what I'm, I'm going for. All right. Try and stay away from that way. You just kind of drift in the same direction. So okay. that is the stunts, Aaron. If you're successful with more sure. than one. Okay. So you've got two hits. Stunts. I got two. So piloting stunts. Are yeah. The first one is you your success. And the I do a barrel roll. No, I'm kidding. Right. I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm you kidding. did. So now, now is your opportunity to do oh, a wait. stunt, in which case, since you have two, that one flipped over. Okay, wasn't thank, you, thank you. So you had two. So the first one's your success. The second one, you can choose a stunt. And one of those, I think, is show off. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do a barrel roll, you're like, I'm going to... I'm gonna go inverted, so it's easy. I totally to do because I am bored as hell. Okay, all right. So because of the because of the ship's on board gravitational uh, systems, right? Yeah, I do. All right. Yeah. As as, as the Montero inverts, we don't, actually we don't. You feel guys that don't back the right. ship in, so they just float into the cargo bay. <gasps> no. Can I do Reverse that? thrusters and just scoop Can them up. Can I do that? Yeah. Well, at this point, you've inverted the ship, right? Okay. But you guys don't feel it because of the gravity systems on, on board. Compensators. But you outside, you see the ship starts to turn. Right as you near, now you're about the middle of the ship, but you're seeing it start to turn. And at one point, uh, go ahead and make, give me another mobility roll. This is to like <laughs> not get hit by one of the engines. Come on, like, come on, you damn sand. You got this. Come on. Boom. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so the ship starts to turn, and one of the one of the it's got two big engines, and it kind of. Oh, hits you and you kind of whoa, whoa! You start to you start to flip, you know, end over end. Ah, right? fuck! But the ship, amazingly enough, and as you're piloting it, right, 
you're able to, uh, you, you can run sensors and pilot the ship at the same time, right? So you're actually, you're seeing that it's actually the ship's position itself to where you're going to have a really good opportunity to maybe catch something at the rear of the craft, you know, based on what you're, even though it's, you know, hits you kind of, almost you feel like almost it bumped you in the right direction to give you a little push. I'm just got that good. All right, cool. So uh, if any, so if, it, no, if no one else is going to do anything at the moment, you now have your suit on, okay? Right, and you head down to the cargo bay. Once you're at the cargo bay, you know that you need to communicate up to the bridge that you're ready for depressurization of the cargo hold, which means that it's going to be sealed. And uh, and once they open those cargo doors, it's you in space. So you tether yourself to to a safety uh, safety bar inside the cargo hold. Captain, I'm down here. I'm set. Yep. All right. Let's. Uh... Do we have to do the cargo hold? I'm not very comfortable with this. I'm locked. Okay. Hold, hold her steady, Davis. Let me get Don't this get thing open. That's what's twist, happening. Okay? It's okay. happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your concerns are noted. Okay. <laughs> now, has uh, Davis reset the, the ship, or when I start opening the cargo bay, I notice we're rolling. So she's inverted the ship and, and positioned it. So now you're okay, but we're stable. Yeah, we're we're stable. not rolling. Okay. She's rolling. Well, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> so as as the door is open. Burr, burr, cool. Yep. Burr. All right. Depressurize. All right. Cool. We're ready to All go. Right. Okay. So. Uh, once the once the cargo holds depressurized, the ramp starts to drop. Right, so go ahead and give me an observation roll. Do we have an, okay. like an open comm link like we do in Charter yes. Run? Yep. Okay. Yep. Cam, you let me know what you need, and I will make it happen. I have one success. Okay. That's so you, you see, you see this this person, right, kind of kind of slowly tumbling head over heel, <laughs> right, as the ship comes around, right. Now, I got you, the UFS in sight. All right. So what are you what are you gonna do? How are you going to, you know? Unidentified flying synthetic. I mean, come on. Um, so, in here, I'm, I know I'm sure there's tie downs. Is there an actual like small umbilicus that that's thrown out for for power or anything like that? I, I figure I'm just going to take one of the tie downs and, and start rolling it out. So like a, like one of the, the tie down straps. Just well, like, not a like strap. A, I'm lo I'm looking for like a, I don't like know, you, a large you, rope or you tether yourself to like a right. safety bar so it slides down the length of the of right. the. Um, of the cargo hold, right. but if you were to like somehow lose your footing or the gravity, the gravity uh, equipment failed and you floated out into space, you'd only make it so far before you were being basically towed. Right. Right. So you're hooked to one of those things. It's long enough to go across and anywhere inside the cargo hold, and then probably an extra ten meters. All right. So I'll run myself to the back. I'm not leaping out. Okay. I am stepping out. Okay. Just want that much, that much force. Okay. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna aim for this floating guy. Okay. So give me a mobility roll. Both Lucas and Cam, both give me mobility rolls. Lucas, you see the ramp of the rear of the ship start to come down, and you said there's someone in a suit that is moving his way towards the end of the ramp. He steps to the end of the ramp. He steps off of it, and it obviously looks like he's trying to, to intercept with you to grab you. So I've got one success. Okay. I got one success. Captain, I got him in sight. Okay. I think I'm gonna get him. Okay. All right. You guys get close enough. You grab a hold of each other, and you kind of bounce and spin for a second to get wrapped up in the tether. But you're you're you, you grabbed on, and at that point, you can start to pull yourselves back into the cargo. All right, Davis, it's time to fly right. I got him. I'm bringing him in. Gun it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So eventually, you guys will pull yourselves into the uh, you know, to the cargo hold, um, where you can then. I'll set close him. Around. I'll set him down. Put my foot not squashing him, put my foot on him, hold him in place, and start shutting the door. Okay. okay. Lucas, what you see as you're pulled into this ship, uh, you know, this is a uh, this is a uh, Hilliard's class ship. Uh, it's a small freighter. Um, and inside the cargo hold are large containment containers that, you know, you, you know that they are used typically for storing some type of gas. Some type of gas form, not liquid form, but gas form agent in them. It is completely full. I'm gonna kind of just look at him intently, like just thoughtfully, kind of staring at him. Right. Is there a camera, like a internal cameras? Yeah, can you can, there are cameras that, that you can look down into the cargo bay. You see uh, Cam and this and this other individual kind of pull themselves into the cargo hold and uh, watch him walk over, close the ramp up. I'm gonna holler. I'm gonna holler up. So I've got I've got the doors closing. I've got my foot holding him in place so it doesn't roll out again. And I'll be like, hey, Davis, look. Got my arms up in the, the muscle man position. I got my foot on top of him. I caught me one. Oh, man, you are a mighty hunter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cam, please, ex please escort our guest to the medical bay. I'll be down shortly. The medical? I thought he was a toaster. Oh. Engineering? Engineering, then. 
Uh, okay. there, there, there is so on the Montero. There is a, a med lab. Okay. Yeah, Montero has a med lab. Here's the schematic. So you or got a galley where you guys are eating your so mess hall. Sure you got your bridge, go and you got your med lab. Right. You got okay. cryo tubes. You've got uh, your uh, your engines. So you got hit by one of these large outboard engines. You know, and uh, you got the upper landing claw, which uh, anchors in when you go into like okay. starports and stuff. You there anchor with the claw. Technical um, So yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, you know, you got cryo tubes up above the bridge, that's and weird. then as well as uh, to the aft of the rear of the bridge, uh, rear of the vessel. But okay. you do have a, a fully functional med lab. Would a med lab be where we would? Do diagnostics on a synthetic too? Yep, sure. Okay. It'd be a great, that's where you have Take him all to the, the med lab. Then. You know, yeah, that's where you this have is why you are the captain. I'm them. just the lowly pilot. Right. Okay. So, all right. So, Cam, you're gonna. So, my question is, do, is my suit tight enough that it's negotiable down the halls? Because I would, I would not take my suit off bringing him in. You could leave the suit on. All right, I'm leaving the suit on. Okay. As Tell soon him as and everything. As soon as we've, yeah. As soon as we've repressurized. And disconnect myself from the umbilicus. You don't know what kind of space goodies he has. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Everything is space goodies. I'm going to help him get up, and then I'm going to motion follow me with my fingers. So I'm going to be kind of laying there, almost like doll-like. Mm -hmm. And then when you motion, I just sit up from my side. Right. And then I'll like jump up into place. Yeah. That ain't creepy at all. You've nope. been so the kid not is, weird is, at all. As your systems come online, you've been drifting for like ten years. What the? Sh you know, nobody knows that. You know, but you've been you've been out here a long time, right? And uh, you know, it's all even even as a synthetic. You know, it's, you, you know, you're like, oh, it's all going back to me now, right? You know, right. so less robotic, but you know, more more you know, sentient like. You're like, oh, yeah, I remember now, right? So without without a doubt, you know, you're like, all right, cool. I've been gone a long time, right? You've got like this onboard computer that's like tracking, like you know, it's like a pedometer. You know? you're like, okay, yeah, cool. How many steps did I take in space? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, so there we are. All right, so I'll walk him into the medical bay. So he's gonna escort you to the med lab unless you've got a problem with that. And uh, you guys go to med lab where there's some diagnostic equipment. There's a there's a table there. Um, you've got some rudimentary scanners. The Montero doesn't come equipped with a medical pod. The medical pod is something that's completely different and more advanced where you actually get in it to help perform certain minor and semi, you know, and some make more, more in, in intrusive surgeries. Um, that's the Prometheus pod yes, we're talking exactly. about. Exactly, that's okay. a medical pod. But you guys have basically like, you know, you've got some. We have what we had, what they had in Alien. Right, you've got like a small triage type thing. So when I go in, I'm assuming no one's there yet. If I okay. shut the door, can I Sealed. sterilize yeah. the entire room? Yes. Okay. So shut the door, okay. sterilize the room. All right. So that what you do when you sterilize, call. you basically seal the room. Okay. Right? I mean, it's a, it's pretty. It's a pretty sterile environment on board the ship, right? The way the ventilation works and everything, it keeps it pretty pretty clean. It's not sterile, but it's pretty damn close to it. The, um, you're, you're missing sterilization. I don't want right, space I, I know you're worried about Got space movies, yes. Right. Um, but, so you yeah, seal the room, the right? Um, now, the skill you would use to do any diagnostics on uh, the synthetic would be ComTech. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm going to just be standing straight up and down in that room, just kind of waiting. So I'm going to give him, I'm going I'm to no. point him to the table. <laughs> You know the synthetic speak. Yeah. So if you sit down on the table, please. I'll walk over and sit down. And then just Do we have a mechanics person? Hands on top of my legs. All right, you're cool. You just go over and sit down. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, ComTech, I'm, I'm, he's definitely dead. There's nothing coming up on the, he's dead. Nothing up on the sensors. Well, well, as you scan him, you know, he doesn't, you know, he's got, you know, he has vital organs, mm -hmm. right? You know, he's got blood pressure. Oh, he has that, like, white blood, too. Mm -hmm. Like, right. oh, the, yeah, the, I remember the, uh, now. The white oatmeal, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, the white oatmeal, <laughs> you know, uh, I remember now. He, you know, he has blood pressure. Um, he's got, you know, retinal, you know, uh, movement, uh, things like that as you kind of look at it. Listen, Captain, what the heck am I looking for on this guy? I don't work on these. Okay, I'll be down in a moment. What are you talking about? You're talking about right in front of me. He's looking at you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of giving him this thoughtful gaze. What's Dave, normal for you? Davis, keep an eye on things here. I'll be uh, welcoming our guest. Mm -hmm. I got you covered, Cap. No I'm worries. not sure this one speaks English, Cap. Uh, I've asked him a couple questions. Are not needed at this time. Actually, yeah, this, is, with... this is definitely something needed. Yeah. <laughs> He's always <laughs> going to insert himself into the situation. the captain goes, the there's Wilson right behind him, the shadow. <laughs> You can keep up, and I head down there. <laughs> shut every door. Every door you go through, shut the door on Wilson. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Shh, just All right. this guy. <laughs> hey, I'm the cork guy. We're having lobster in the mess hall real quick. <laughs> I'm completely ignoring him. All right, okay. Hate that guy. 
<laughs> yeah, you've seen you've seen enough of these of these you know these guys fresh out of school you know where they think they know everything. You're like, yeah, okay. He Just, is a yeah. nuisance at best. <laughs> and you really want to wonder like, why do I get the why do I get the newbies? Well, actually, in this situation, because I if it is a Wayland Utani Utani uh, android, I would have a lot more access than you would. It's corp corp property. Yeah, yeah. Which means so in this circumstance, yeah. you might say eh, he could be a tool. Yeah. He's a tool. Tool. He's a tool. To answer his earlier question, I will like look at just looking at him for a couple moments and say, I'm operating within normal protocols. Okay, Cap. He does speak English. He says he's normally he's operating in normal. So he does speak English. Screw you in Vietnamese. So he says he's good. Okay. The program is K-pop. You make your way down there, and you're like, "Come the door." Well, that's how we started. So, as, you, as you come up, you'll see that that uh, that Cam has sealed the room, right? So if, as long as you're fine, you can punch in your codes. It'll okay. unseal the room. The, the room, you know, you know, the doors open. The up. red light kind of goes to yellow again. In walks Captain Miller, and behind him, Wilson. And, and neither one of them's in a suit. Neither one of them's in a suit. Well, it's unlikely that you have any kind of parasitic or bacterial problems. Are you walking and telling me this? But Cam doesn't know that. Yeah, but Can't you're say walking like, and saying that. On and I'm yeah. probably telling you that so. as we're walking through. He's unlikely to have any parasitic or bacterial problems or viral. For yeah, I'm okay. getting the suit right now. Good to know. Space I would have destroyed almost anything. And say, my name is Captain Miller. Welcome to my ship. My name is Lucas. Lucas, you look like you're a little far from home right now. I believe that is correct. Okay. Uh, how did you find yourself uh, drifting through space? I was. Uh... Anything I want? To... Okay. Yeah, you're. Yep. Yeah, you're, you're, you're you. Free. You're free okay. to go. You're you. The ship I was on suffered a critical malfunction. The crew believed that I was responsible for it and ejected me into space. What is the name of your ship? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. My sh <laughs> what ship. What about earlier? My the, ship the was the no What? Okay. All right. You, yeah, I was just going to give you a ship name if you didn't have one, just in case. But go okay. ahead. The, the ship's name was Nautilus. Okay. Not the Nostromo. That's good. No, Nautilus. <laughs> Nautilus. <laughs> do any of it. Do, do, do I. Huh? Does Cam know the Nautilus? What is your background? Mine? You're a roughneck, right? I'm just a roughneck. You're a roughneck, probably not. Um, okay, no problem. I you just... can go ahead and get, make me a um, make me a wits roll. So you're going to have Wilson make a wits roll? Have Wilson okay. make a wits roll, and I'll have the captain make a wits roll. Okay. okay. One. All right. You've heard of the Nautilus. It's a science vessel. Okay. The Nautilus was a uh, science vessel. Okay. And I, you know, I'll let the pilot as well make a wits roll. Oh, well, uh, my so, mind, when it says so the synthetic so, says... Synthetic has identified yeah. himself as Lucas Shit. and he said that he was jettisoned from his ship uh, after well, what happened on the ship again? There was a critical malfunction. This critical malfunction, the crew basically blamed the synthetic and they jettisoned him out of his space. Yeah. <laughs> they kicked him off the Thought ship. He did it. Right? And he said that he came from a ship called the Nautilus, so you can make a wits roll to see if you know you've ever heard of the Nautilus. All right. I have. Yeah. I have. I have no successes. Right. So you guys have heard of the Nautilus before. All you know is that with the one success, you know that it was a science vessel, and uh, it was a it was a uh, it was a bionational vessel. It wasn't a Weyland Yutani vessel. Okay. What do you mean bio? Oh, okay, that's, that's a different a company. Okay. Competitor. Yep. Um, it was a different company. So, Captain, I know a few things about this uh, type of thing. It's from a bio Nautilus vessel. Bionational. Bionas. Sorry, it's the Nautilus ship, but it is the Bionational company. Company. Yes. Okay. Well, if you are from a Bionational ship, how is it that you are in a uh, Utani uniform? This was what I was provided with. What? What? What were you? Pro okay, I can't hear anything. I'm not there. I'm piloting the ship, right? But you're piloting the ship. But you're like listening into this conversation. Of they're down in the med lab. Yeah. Okay, but I can hear them. You can hear them. You I saw it. What the fuck does that mean? What does that even mean? Uh, may I, Captain? Uh, synthetic. What is your uh, your model? Synthetic. Uh, my model is. You prefer artificial life form. Okay. <laughs> I prefer the term artificial life form. Yes. I am a early Bishop model number four seven six two one nine. Your manufacturer. My manufacturer is Bionational. 
And your employer? My employer is Waylon Wutani. Uh, your date of employment? Uh, yeah. He gives you some date. <laughs> yep. yep. 2183 of the uh, second train. <laughs> Yeah. So he gives you a date. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're trying to vet the authenticity of what he's telling you, right? Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and um, give me a uh, manipulation roll, Lucas, and then you're going to give me a observation roll, mm -hmm. right? To try and um, not like do I believe so what he's saying? Five, right? Yeah. Three five. Plus, yeah. Right. So but I have eight dice manipulation. So Lucas, you roll manipulation. It's okay. It's fine. And then, it's and then... <gasps> look, you got a success. You're good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Seems, seems, seems legit. legit. But he's so, a synthetic. Synthetics, you know synthetics, and look at you with that straight face and just give you the yeah. craziest story ever. So he seems sincere as far as a synthetic can be. And I, I was going to say, um, I would say employment, though, is not the correct choice of words. Mm -mm. Nope. Captain, yeah. I don't like this one bit. Mm -mm. Can we uh, Nope. Can we plug him in and go through his programming? Is it hang, outside of oh, oh, character? Can you? Oh, you know, uh, you know that... that uh, synthetic life forms can be interfaced with onboard computers like Mother that you have on the ship and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Absolutely. I do trust Mother. That, that yeah. is something that okay. everyone uh, knows. Would you consent to us plugging you in and checking all of your information? Are you really asking a robot to consent to something? I consent. I'm going to take you over and have okay. your memory wipe. Yeah. <laughs> so we're it's going to easier to have consent. I'll lay down on the menu. Interface him with Mother totally. and have Mother check his programming. Yeah, but it's okay. a totally quick right. Okay. Or two right. two. So, so you're okay with them like, going back. Going through your memory <laughs> bank and saying, basically stop, looking please. at all your uh, please stop. Uh, instruction sets. Okay. Do I hear the tool thing over the comm? <laughs> <laughs> Does he hear the tool thing? He's no, he's not in our comm links, right? He can't. No, he he's can't just in the room. So, so no, he cannot okay. hear the tool thing. <laughs> all right. Are we all comm linked up? Is that yeah, what you're you guys decided? are talking to the room, the channel's open. So people like, so Davis is, a, is uh, on the bridge, obviously, piloting the ship. So is Davis's voice coming through the room speaker? Yes. So yes, oh, wait, he hears that. Oh wait, from the that. room speaker? I yeah. thought we had like... Oh, no, it's not like... She no, no, forgot it's not to like turn her mic. No, oh this is, no. This is, okay. Imagine like you're on Star Trek, you know, you're like, you know, Captain, I think, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, no yes. offense, my you artificial buddy. You had your finger on the intercom button instead of the yeah. private button. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, so yes, he yes. did say that, and then I will follow up with no offense, artificial buddy. I cannot take offense. Oh, right. That Please is good to me. know. I do not identify with the said emotion that you were referencing. However, I do prefer the term artificial life. Because <laughs> he's all, it's synthetic. I plug you in. All right. You're going to, so who is going to uh, plug Lucas into Who else has ComTech? He's good at it. Uh, I have ComTech. So I've done some I, of this stuff before, Captain, if you want me to do it. Uh, I'd like Cam to do it. He, okay, I actually have skill at ComTech. Yeah, but we don't trust you. She's coming Nobody over trusts the Corona Company, man. <laughs> I am totally the nicest so, guy in the world. So I'm going to look at him okay. because he should be trained in this kind of stuff. Yes. So I'm going to look at Wilson and I'm going to say, so you've, you've done this before, so tell me about it. I'm going to ask him some question. <laughs> like, you know, helmet on. If you've got the green wires and two yellow, yeah. how do you connect them up? Yeah. And if he answers reasonably, what is your contact level is basically what I'm going for. Uh, I think I have one. What is your contact level is basically what I'm going for. Yeah, right, I got this. <laughs> if it's okay, I yeah. would prefer... I'm sorry, If it's okay, I would prefer that. the corporate... It's just real good. We're friends, we're friends. We like you. So what's the pattern? Are we you like Lucas? Even, even Wilson's a great guy. Look at him. Okay. Does he look like a nice okay. guy? So you said you would prefer for Mr. Wilson to stand here? Yes, that would Signature. be... That like would be corporate guard. protocol. Yeah, right. okay. He should have the proper training. Great. He's got the smug uh, he does have smile smug of somebody that knows what they're doing in their job. Mr. Right. Wilson? So Mr. Lucas has got a request? Mm -hmm. uh, Lucas has requested that you're the one who scans him, so please proceed. All right, if he's a, a company asset. I believe so that, that is. Go ahead, so. Anyone else think it's if weird that he was like bio-national, but he prefers... The Yuntai. Wait, what is it? Yutani. You guys have all. Yutani. You guys have all done runs for Bio National and Whalen Utani both. You know that. Whalen Utani. Okay. Uh, you know Bio National is a direct competitor. Why do you keep saying Yuntai? Like it's the big, fucking D and D yeah. thing. Sorry. I, Yuntai. It's not that I have a preference. No. It's just merely who purchased me. So, are you going to push the roll and try and do it again, or do you want to use one of the chi the group chips? Tell us about pushing. Push it real so, good. Uh, I'll, I'll explain how the pushing <laughs> Bump, works. Um, so, anytime you make a skill test, anytime that you are not happy with the result, you can do something called pushing the roll, which allows you to then re-roll it. It raises your stress level by one, so now you're also rolling a stress die, but you get to re-roll the dice again 
or any failures. How do I get rid of the stress later? Uh, over time or something in game. I think that, this you know, is a stress one because I, I, think I don't think we can get rid of a stress dice. No. Let's save the chips for yeah. right. combat. So you're going to push the roll. So now yeah. you go ahead and, and you get to re roll the dice because you didn't have any successes to begin with. Ah, oh, mother. Okay. All right, so you can't try again. So you've you tried again. You are absolutely so the worst. As you, as you, hook, as you hook up um, this Lucas. This is apple. I don't know how to use apples. <laughs> you, yeah, you hook Lucas up to, to Mother, and either you're not you're not doing it correctly, you, re, you reach an impasse where you're like, God, I'm not sure what the command's, I'm not sure what the command line mm -hmm. structure is here. You know, this is not, I've, you've not seen this before. This interface, you've not seen it before, so you don't understand it. It's in a syntax you don't get, and... You know, so you're not able to get through to, to take a look at what his subsets are. Cam, can you assist, please? No, he did everything right. As far as I can see, I'm not going to be able to help. Because I already rolled and failed, just right. so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so these guys are like, you know, oh, yep, they're like trying to like hook you up. So It well, doesn't go in there. You know, it doesn't go in there. You are, you are, you are actually interfaced with Mother. He just doesn't realize it because he doesn't know what he's looking at. But you realize that at one point you are... You are actually interface. You can make a com tech roll if you want to to, to try and capture like information like ship deck plans, things oh, like shit. that. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Oh no! He's Why did we take him on? Yeah. He's hacking the hackers. Oh no! You plugged him in. <laughs> <laughs> you have fucked up. You have fucked up now. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh I fell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we all, now, we so all you can't push the roll, but you can't use these. So I'm gonna burn up all the chips so you can't use them. <laughs> you got nine dice. I will burn a chip. Okay, boom. All right, there goes a the chip. Oh. All right, there you go. So you got two. Oh, okay. Two. It was right. behind. So you've interfaced with mother. Mother's like, hello, Lucas. Hello, mother. And you can also perform a stunt at this point if you want to. If you want to show off and let the rest of people there go. Uh, He's got all I'm in. Water <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm in. The water. Uh, I believe I am okay, and that the humans are displaying uncharacteristic paranoia due to my synthetic nature. Oh no! Can you please give them the okay? Uh, yes. Okay, I thought you were going to like, like, please, please set it, like, the sedate them or something. I'd be like, oh no. Also, I would like admin access to the ship. <gasps> oh. Okay. He says access denied. She says, oh, um, God. Okay. Uh, uh, access specifically um, provision for <coughs> Captain Miller. I am standing by for code. So if I can, uh, I would like to try to get admin access. You want to try and basically crack the code? Yeah. Okay. Oh, shit. Give me a contact roll. This is going to be at a minus two dice pool penalty. Let's see. Where are you? You guys were thinking I'm paranoid. This is all going on internally inside. Right. We don't know any of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a success. You have admin access. Boom. You may now look at the ships. You can look at the ship's complete structure. You can open closed worried. doors. You can uh, uh, activate we don't sensor know arrays. Side, so. And you can even over. You can uh, you can override uh, ship commands and also instigate self-destruct sequence. No. Thank you, mother. You're welcome. Oh no. Right. So. So a few moments of silence go by, and and then mother comes online and says, you know, I'll give, gives you the all safe. Oh, sounds good to me. Okay. All right. Mother says it's good. We're good to go. Yeah, plug him. Mother scanned him, and yes. all right. I still can't figure out how mother got contact with him. None of these things look to line up right. He plugged him in, but he wasn't able to read the code. Basically, he didn't hit. He was like, ah, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to get back to uh, HQ on that about the weird uh, you know, coding of it. I trust mother. So if mother says he's all good, then he's all good. All right. So I'm a little board, more paranoid about it. Thank computers you, are a little, they're a little finicky, and we connected a computer to another computer. A little worried about that, Captain. Uh, I think we should keep him in the airlock. We've got hundreds of thousands of computers like this, and they rarely go bad. All right. I trust mother. She's uh, never steered us wrong before. Uh, if mother says he's okay, then he's okay. Yeah. I understand your hesitancy to trust distrust me. Earlier, oh, shit. He can hear me? models have in the past been collectively wiggy. I have a I am a far superior model with plenty of emotional enhancements to prevent me from becoming wiggy. Okay, okay. What's your name? What's your name, synthetic? 
Lucas. All right. Lucas, nice to meet you. As long as you stay in your area and I stay in mine as a pilot, we will be good. Just don't fuck around. All right? No fucking around. Uh, I believe fucking around would be against <laughs> my protocol. Okay. Okay. That sounds good to me. Let's just keep it peaceable. Hands off a barbecue. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be cool. All right? We be cool. Lucas, I apologize for my crew. Manners aren't their strong point. Hey, Davis, how long before we land? It's all right, Captain. Like, it's another, like, day and a half. I have experience. We have a while. We have a while, while camp. I have... Like, it's going to be about a day and a half. It's okay, Captain. I have experienced emotional... And at this point, uh, you're interrupted, right? Uh, right? Almost at the same time. Wilson, you get an incoming message from the company. Okay. Right? On, on your... On your personal data oh, device, that's whatever that is, right? You've got yeah. a small little, everyone's got like that, right? Letting you know that a sensor reflection, mm-hmm. you know, has been picked up and, you know, uh, advise, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, you know, when you go look at, look, look at advice, basically yeah. like assess an advice, okay. right? You get basically an internal sensor ping that there is a large structure has come into the outer reaches of your sensor sensor range, but the ship's sensor range. I see this too. Though. I was gonna say, does he, no, not yet. The pilot then, doesn't then see moments it. later, right? Because you're directly interfaced with the ship, so as the ship gets it, you see it. Oh, right? okay. Then moments later, the ship mother comes online and says, right, and this is goes across the entire ship, right? We have another ship entering in our sensor array range. I want. I just Our, want to put an alert starboard, out there. The there is another ship in range off starboard bow. Just is it, so is it Lucas's knows. ship? I'm headed to the bridge. Please excuse me. No, uh, I'm, he's like still plugged I in. I didn't report like, that we should uh, investigate this from the company. Okay, well we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. I'm headed up to the bridge. Okay. Just keep in mind, Captain. He's not the boss of the ship, you are? No, he's not the boss right, of the ship. All right, all right, Of course, yeah. this is coming over the everyone so he can hear this. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. The Eventually, Davis is going to realize... She has a drug problem. Home. She don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not her boss. So, but are you staying in the middle My boss's boss. So, uh, when everyone leaves, I'm going to pull out the cables. Okay. And, uh... No, no. I didn't leave. Okay. So, uh, I'm just wondering. So, you're still in mid-lab for now. You're heading up to the bridge. Are you in the bridge or are you staying in mid-lab? Um, are you going to... Keep our friend company. Yeah, I can, I can do that. Okay. Okay, so you're staying in the bridge. Now. You're going to the bridge. Okay. So two, you head to the bridge. You're already at the bridge. They leave. When they leave, do you disconnect? Uh, no, because he's still there. Okay. So you still, you guys are standing there, like looking at. Your, he's like right. plugged oh, in. I have no idea what to do, so yeah. I'm just standing there staring at him. Walk probably out staring out, back. Before I walk out, I... Skin. <laughs> can I open yeah. up a private channel? You can request somebody like Captain. Can you uh? Can you? Can you you come online here real quick and go. Well, to I actually line. want to talk to Cam. Okay, yeah, you can. You can. Okay, uh, I want to open a private channel to Cam. Okay, so, so you can do that. So, so I'm going to get the call. I'm going to have to go to the wall, from the plug bridge. it into the suit. No, no. You get yeah. the call from the bridge to your suit. Okay. So, Cam. Yep. Uh, I am not entirely sure of the trustworthiness of our new passenger. I, I think that we should keep him in the med bay. And if at all possible, seal him in it until we get to our destination and we can have a little bit more time to suss this out. Got it. I understand. All right. Tim Stay right there. Like and I step out of the door and <laughs> shut the door yeah, and lock him. Right <laughs> but okay. we don't know that he's like okay. in the system. No, like you he's, know. We no. don't know that he's an admin. You know okay. he was plugged in. He's like, right, right. <laughs> But okay. then I'm gonna I'm gonna tell him to stay right there, step okay. out, shut the door, lock it. Okay. Well, he right. leaves. He's like leaving. He closes so, the door behind you. And you know that you can open the door at any time you want. And I'm monitoring. I figured I can monitor the. So comp. you can you can actually monitor the comp to hear the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. But I'm gonna ask you before I even walk out the door up to the bridge. I can say, Lucas, can you just kind of quit yourself? Yes, I can. Thank you. You tell him what? I say, Lucas, can you disconnect yourself? Oh, okay. Right. So, right. so now He's nobody's in there with Lucas. I'm gonna I'm gonna head to the Chow House. Feeling synthetic up by himself. <laughs> we think it's locked though. He's we locked. Think, I think it's I locked. locked him we don't in. know he's in the main I think frame. he's watching it. <laughs> you locked so you locked him in. So yeah. cool. Mark's in yeah. there. You head back to the galley. Hmm? Okay, so you go back to the galley. Everyone else is on the bridge. So we're on the bridge. All right. Um Shh. so Starboard. Helmet off. Left side, right? I'm gonna be listening to the bridge communications. Okay. <laughs> 
No, you gotta plug back in. I don't like this oh, at all. I, I, I have to plug in to do that. You do have to plug back in if you want to catch the communications between the deck to deck, right? Uh, but you have access, so all you have to do is go interface somewhere, and you're like, I'm in. You don't. You no longer need an access code that only the captain has. To gain, you know, or you can look at the ship's recorder. I don't know he you has. Know, I know we don't know, but that's, it's that's like so bad. When the ship's comms gets recorded, you know, on the recorder, you can just go back and listen to it if you wanted to, too. But you and do I, have the interface. As far as I'm concerned, he. I asked him to what disconnect. So are means the, he's, uh, Are there cameras in here? He can't be there. Connected. Are cameras? There's okay, cameras. So I'm going to have cameras record about a minute or so of me sitting there. Oh and no! And silence. Loop, I don't like this at all. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, so oh, no. so in order, so you'll have to if you go to reconnect, you can you'll have to go back and erase and then patch port. Basically, you'll have to go in and do something there. Okay, cool. So, okay. All right. So at, at some point, you reconnect. Right. As soon as you connect, you've got full admin access. You go ahead. You take a few moments to basically reverse and overlap. You know, so it looks like you're just looping where it just looks like you're just sitting there. Yep. All right. Okay. Cool. I so just keep that. thinking of David. It, it was David, right? Yeah. Yep. I oh. can just keep thinking of David. I'm like, oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, well, yeah. Everybody looked at the uh, sheet, the white sheet, like, oh, what's that? Scientist, okay. Set it down. <laughs> <You know? laughs> All right, so, um, uh, so, Shit. yeah, so, yeah, that whole thing is something that I wrote in and added to this thing. It's like, I think it, it's going to be interesting the way it plays out. I'm so, regretting not taking it now. <laughs> and we're, you're running the module actually out of the starter box. Yes. With I'm, some, I'm running some Chariot of the Gods, and I've added. You know, because I thought we were gonna have a higher player count, so I added the extra character and wrote a separate agenda. So, so we're at the bridge. We're on the bridge. What are we doing? So I want to scan the ship. Okay. And see if there are any life signs on the ship. Okay, give me a content roll. Oh, yeah, actually, just no, I'm sorry. Check, yeah, pilot, just to make pilot sure pilot. that we were at the the number of life signs that we're supposed to be. <laughs> You're gonna do an internal. <laughs> Okay, no successes. <laughs> All right, do you want to push the roll, or are you good with that? You just uh, say, you know what? Just good. I look, I didn't see anything. Um, I think I'm okay. Yeah, oh. When I see her do the scan, would it be possible to uh, cause a uh, oh, distress no. signal oh, to be no. coming from the vessel? Have mother recognize it. <laughs> Lucas is um, just causing so you, so, problems. So you want to implant a fake distress signal? Yeah. You basically want to have the alarm go off. Right. Okay, so go ahead and give me a piloting roll. You are David from from Covenant, aren't you? Uh, oh, oh. Okay. Six, six, so, all right. So like the alarm goes. So when you go to uh, to look, take a look at the sensors, the alarm goes off. What kind of alarm is it? Is it a breach? Is it a uh, proximity alarm? Is um, it? Um, it's a distress signal. Okay. From the ship they just discovered. Okay. So and I am going to be oh. hiding my tracks. Okay. And, uh, These are stunts. Yep. And then um, I'm also going to get a plus one modification on a later skill roll. Okay. All right. So as you look at the sensors, you're now looking at there is a distress signal coming in from another ship. The name of that ship is the USCSS Cronus. Is that one of our ships? Uh, go ahead and give me a, uh, what did I have you make before? Uh, pilot roll. Comtech. Comtech roll? No, pilot roll. Pilot roll? Okay. Give, me a, give me a pilot roll. Actually, no, it was wits. I'm sorry. Give me a wits roll. That's what it was, wits. To see if you've ever heard of the Cronus. No. Never heard of the Cronus. You should okay. ask your pilot. Okay. Go ahead. Please. Okay. Now, is this distress signal ship wide, or is it just That's the bridge? Sorry. Or how do you uh, want the, the distress signal to go out? Uh, but we're buddies. So I'm going to ask you, have you ever heard of yep. our whole ship? Like the whole alarm, uh, uh, right? The whole uh, distress signal, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's make it okay. a Okay, so everyone hears a distress signal come okay, across. Okay, yeah, right the over the wall. Hey, what's going on? Uh, we came across another ship. Uh, they are uh, sounding a distress signal. Okay, you're receiving a distress signal that looks yeah. to be coming from the ship that's within the range of your sensors. Well, Do we, we know, is it, is it? The the Sith is it Lucas's ship? Uh, Nautilus. It is not named Nautilus, so it would not be his ship. Okay. So if she asked me about the ship. Can I make a wits roll? Uh, yes. Have you told her the name of the ship? Uh, I, yes. Okay. So you will also hear this because you're at the bridge. Mm -hmm. Anyone on the bridge will hear the name and can make a wits roll. The USCSS Crow. All right. 
I got nothing. And Dave, you can get one extra I'm, die as being a company man. I don't know anything about that boss. An extra studying that you've done. All right. Yeah. So no one's heard of the Cronus. All right. Okay. All right. So I'm unplugging myself. Okay. I'm going to stop the feed. Okay. And I'm going to go up to the comm signal and press it and say, Captain, I understand there is a distress signal. Is there anything I can do to help? Lucas, have you ever heard of the Cronus? Yes, you've heard of the Cronus. The Cronus is a science vessel that went missing three quarters of a century ago. It's been drifting in space for 75, almost 75 years. Relayed. Well, <laughs> relayed. <laughs> it's a whaling tiny ship? Yes. But we don't, he hasn't said anything yet. It's you know, you know that it's a Wayland Utani science vessel that went on a mission to an outer rim colony uh, to do research, and then it went missing, and that was like seventy-five well, years ago. Uh, I think we should check it out. We, but, well, 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 we don't have that information yet. Right. That is, no, I, that, I was, oh, I was, was sorry. I was repeating. Okay, it. okay. sorry. Yeah. Like, uh, besides that information, it's also got to alert out a uh, what is it? distress signal, it's which yeah. we're obligated to. We are obligated to investigate and distress. Just signal. remind me once again, why are we obligated? Don't we just have a job? I, All distress so company, company, well, uh, you know, politics and you know, uh, kind of what space law, if you will, is that any time a ship uh, inter uh, comes into contact with a distress signal, you are to, um, you know, report. You know, at least, you know. All right, um, that's fine. I'm game. To Whatever. I'm bored. Right, Let's do this. See if you can <laughs> it's kind of like a ship sending out an SOS. All right. All right. All right. All right. You, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know that if, if, you, if you, it's found that you ignored a distress signal from another ship, you could forfeit the pay of your run. Oh, fuck that shit. Yeah, Let's I mean, do it. Tr <laughs> trouble for liability problems. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, but we, Cam, don't get out of your suit It's been missing for 75 yet. years, so we definitely yeah, should. Yeah, I, I hear you. A little bit Wouldn't it be great if we just got to sleep in our crowd for years. another couple of days? <laughs> um, I'm going nah, to fuck get that shit. He's boring. too. Okay. Uh, Davis, you're in charge while I'm gone. Aye, aye, Captain. Uh, uh, Cam and I are going to go dock with the other ship, and we're going to go investigate and right. see if anyone's still alive over there. All right. Well, as you as please be careful. This at some point, as, as the ship, as Davis kind of moves the ship around to no, intercept with the uh, distress signal. Still in cryo. Right. What comes into view is this large ship that you can see on the cover of my book. Oh, cool. Right. It is a large, it's a five deck ship. Uh, science vessels are larger than freighters because they have to carry a lot more equipment. And uh, it is obviously, I mean, it is a, a complete and eerie feeling that washes over you when you see this thing. It is uh, at this time that I'm thankful space. I am a pilot. Uh, you see, you see very intermittent, like singular, like light that'll flash every once in a while. It appears to be a complete ghost ship. <laughs> and and the, the, the eeriness of it is unsettling. It makes you feel very uncomfortable. And that's where we'll end it. Oh, oh God! Okay. I am hoping that there is some salvage over there that's worth a lot of money. <laughs> yep. So yeah, you know, salvage. There's salvage rights. There's things like all kinds of things that go on depending on how long it's been, who's it belonged to, and all those kind of things. Thank you for listening to another NCRP Productions podcast. To stay on top of everything we're doing, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and like us on Facebook. All at NCRP Productions. You can show your support and help us continue to produce content by joining our Patreon. We offer additional podcasts like our B-Sides and have GM materials, maps, and other fun things you can discover over time. You can find our podcasts on YouTube, Anchor, Spotify, Apple, Google, and many other fine podcast sites. Just look for us at NCRP Productions. We value your thoughts so please don't hesitate to leave us feedback or comments. And if you would like to contact us directly, you can email us at ncrpproductions at gmail.com.